In this video, we'll talk about how to find the area between functions of y. So I want to begin by drawing a picture. So I'll have some axes. OK, so now I will have one curve. Maybe that looks something like this. And I'm going to call this one x equal. So my x variable is going to be isolated. And it's going to be in terms of y. So I'll write x equals f of y. So this, uh, this is what I call x being a function of y. And then I'll have some other function. Maybe it looks like that. And I'm going to call this one x equals g of y. So both of these have the x isolated, and they're both functions of y. So let's say I want to find the area between these on the interval from c to d on the y-axis. So if I draw horizontal lines at c and at d, we're talking about this region over here between these two curves on that interval. So the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to split this up into rectangles. Okay, and then take a limit of Riemann sum. So I'll split up my interval from C to D into subintervals, so into pieces. And somewhere along the road, I'm going to call one of these tick marks, kind of an arbitrary one. I'm going to call this one Y subscript I. So it's kind of like the starting point. I'll call this one Y naught. And then we'll have Y1. And eventually, I'll get to some arbitrary one, which I'll call Y subscript I. And then there, I'm going to draw a rectangle. So at that y value, I would draw a horizontal line. It's going to touch both, both of these curves. And then I'm going to draw vertical lines until I reach the edge of this subinterval. And then another horizontal line to make my rectangle. OK, so if I look at this rectangle, this width is going to be a delta y now rather than it is delta x. The other thing that I'll need to know is, well, what is this length? Well, the length, to get that, I will need to plug in this y value, yi, into both of these functions, into the f of y function and into the g of y function. And that'll tell me the x coordinate here and the x coordinate here. And then I subtract. So it will be f of yi minus g of yi. OK, so my area is going to be a limit as n goes to infinity, because I'm going to take an infinite number of rectangles. Then the sum from i equals 1 to n. OK, and now I'm going to have sort of this width of a rectangle, which is delta y, times its length, which is f of y subscript i minus g of y subscript i. The sigma will say, oh, I'm adding up the area of n rectangles. And again, the limit says, well, now do an infinite number of rectangles. OK, and as we've seen before, this limit of Riemann sums, we can write as a definite integral. So my definite integral now, the variable in it will be y. So if I think about y for this region, it sort of starts at c, and it goes until d. The delta y becomes a dy in the integral. And this function right now that's in terms of y sub i's, I just change those y sub i's to y. So I'll get f of y minus g of y. So in terms of my formula, f of y, I think of this as the function on the right. So I'm going to call this x subscript right. And I'm calling it x because in the equation, the x is going to be isolated. And once I plug in for it, I'll be plugging in this formula, which will be in terms of y. And we'll see this when we do an example. And the g of y, I'm going to call this one x subscript left because it's the function on the left. All right, so I'm boxing that formula. And now let's look at an example. So let's find the area between y squared equals x plus 1 and, oops, sorry, this should say x minus 2y equals 7. All right, so what I want to do is draw a picture of this. So I want to draw some axes. So the y squared equals x plus 1, this may look Maybe something like that you're a little bit less familiar with graphing. So let's talk about how we can do this. I'm going to isolate the x here to get x equals y squared minus 1. So if this instead had been y equals x squared minus 1, it would have been a, an upward facing parabola. Because the x's and the y's are switched, this is now going to be a sideways parabola. And it will go upwards in the x direction. 
That means in the positive x direction. So my parabola is going to look something like something like this. This is going upwards, but in the x direction. It sort of extends like this in the positive x direction. Okay, and this negative one represents the x-intercept. And I can see that because if I plug in y equals zero, I get x is negative one. So this other equation is a line. To graph it, it may be helpful to get the y isolated. So that would give me, let's see, I'd get x minus seven equals two y. And now if I isolate, if I divide by two, I get one half x minus seven halves equals y. So if we draw this, the y-intercept is some negative number. Um, so it's some negative number and the slope is positive. So maybe that line looks something like, maybe it looks something like this. Again, not totally to scale, but maybe it looks something like that. So that is y equals one half x minus seven halves. So if I think about this region I'm trying to find the area of, in terms of a right function and a left function, the way I can figure out well, which one's which is now I'm gonna draw a horizontal line to sort of correspond to these horizontal rectangles I was drawing. So if I draw a horizontal line somewhere in my region, the function that it hits on the right is this line, and the function that it hits on the left is that parabola. And no matter where I draw a horizontal line, like even if I draw it somewhere over here, that doesn't change. The function on the right is that line, the function on the left is that parabola. However, if we were to draw vertical lines, the top function and the bottom function does change somewhere, and we'll look at that after we do it this way. Okay, so if we use this formula for the area, thinking of this as a dy integral, I need to know what's the smallest y could be, which happens to be at this point, and what's the biggest it could be, which is gonna be at that point. So I will need to find these intersection points. So we already defined those intersection points. Okay, so if we look at our equations, one of our equations initially was x equals y squared minus one. And with the other equation, it would be nice if I have the x isolated. So with this line equation, it would be nice if we have the x isolated. And if we were to isolate the x here, we get that this is equivalent to x equals, I would just add the 2y, to 2y plus seven. So I'm gonna use it in that form. So our other equation was x equals 2y plus seven. All right, so if I set those equal, because these both equal x, we get y squared minus one equals 2y plus seven. Let's move all the terms to one side so we can solve this quadratic. I get y squared minus 2y minus 8 equals 0. And if we factor, we get y minus 4 times y plus 2 equals 0. So from this, I get y equals 4 or negative 2. So I could plug back in uh, into either of these equations to figure out the x values. So if I did that in the parabola equation with y equals four, we'd get that the x coordinate is four squared minus one, and that's 15. If we did the same with y equals negative two, and I plugged it in, we get x equals negative two being squared minus one, and that's three. So let's label those in our picture. So this point is 15 comma four, and that low point there, the x coordinate of that was three, and the y coordinate was negative two. All right, so I'm gonna do this in two ways. So solution one, I'm gonna do this as a dy integral using the formula we just introduced in this video, thinking about a right function and a left function. So our area using that formula will look like we will have x subscript right minus x subscript left dy. So x right, when I plug in for this, remember that just means that x is isolated and it equals some stuff in terms of y. So when I plug in this stuff that's in terms of y into this, it matches up with the fact that this needs to be a dy integral. Okay, and what are my limits of integration? Well, this in my picture, the smallest y I ever got was negative two, and the biggest it got was four. So look at my picture. So we have this integral from negative two to four, and 
So the function on the right was this line. So this is x sub right. And the function on the left was this parabola. So this is x subscript left. So x sub right was 2y plus 7. It was x equals 2y plus 7. And then minus, if I plug in for x left, our formula there, I gotta put parentheses, so I make sure I, I'm gonna subtract all of this, and I don't forget to distribute that negative sign. x subscript left was y squared minus one, and we have dy. So now I just simplify, and I take the antiderivative. So we get this integral from negative two to four. If I distribute the negative sign, we'll get negative y squared, we'll get plus two i, and we'll get plus eight dy. Now we're ready for an antiderivative. So we get negative y to the third over three plus y squared plus eight y. And I gotta plug in the negative two and the four. Okay, so if I plug in four into this, we'll get negative four cubed over three plus four squared plus eight times four. And then I gotta subtract what I get when I plug negative two in. So I'll put a big parentheses. And if I plug negative two in, we'll get negative and then negative two being cubed over three plus negative two squared and then plus e times negative two in parentheses. So if we simplify, this is negative 64 over three plus 16 plus 32 minus, this will be positive eight thirds plus four minus 16. Okay, so if we simplify this, and I combine all of the constant terms together, what we'll end up getting is 60. So that's from adding the 16 and the 32 and doing the four minus 16 and distributing that negative sign to it. Okay, if we combine all the terms that are over three, we'll get negative 64 over three minus eight thirds, which is minus 72 over three. Okay, so this becomes 60 minus 24, which is 36. And that is our answer. Okay, so I also wanna talk about one other way to do this, solution two. So what if we were to do this using our first formula for the area between curves as a dx integral? So here I'm gonna think about the top function and the bottom function. Okay, so I'm gonna redraw my picture. So I'm gonna have some axes. I'm gonna redraw this picture. So we have this sideways facing parabola. Okay, so this was x equals y squared minus one. And then we have our line. Our line was something like this. Remember its equation was x equals two y plus seven. And this upper intersection point was 15 comma four. This lower intersection point was at three comma negative two. So if we're gonna use the area formula, from A to B, and I do the top function minus the bottom function, so y top minus y bottom. And this is gonna be a dx integral, because when I plug in, if the y is isolated and I plug in for the y, it's gonna be some stuff in terms of x that I plug in. So from here, I wanna give you four minutes to try to set up what this area would look like as a dx integral, thinking about the top function and the bottom function, so pause the video in, in four, three, two, one, pause it and try this for four minutes on your own first. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried it for about four minutes. So if to think about my top function and my bottom function, I'm gonna draw some vertical lines. So if I draw the vertical line somewhere here, the bottom function is on this line and the top function is on that parabola. But as soon as I pass this intersection point and I draw a vertical line, the top function is on the parabola, just the upper part of the parabola, and the bottom function is on the parabola also, just the bottom part of the parabola. So that suggests, because the top and the bottom function, they sort of, they change somewhere, I need to split up my integral into pieces. I'm gonna draw a vertical line here, and I'm gonna need to split it up. So I'm gonna have this region I'm gonna call A1, and this whole region I'm gonna call A2, and I'm gonna need to find an integral for both of those separately. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna to need to do is get the y isolated in each of my equations. Okay, so we need 
to isolate y in each equation. So in the equation x equals 2y plus 7, I think we had that isolated already. This was over here. If we isolate that, we get y equals 1 half x minus 7 halves. And in the other equation, I'll put a bullet point here and a bullet point next to the other one, x equals y squared minus 1. If I try to isolate y, I get x plus 1 equals y squared. And if I square root both sides, we get y equals, got to put a plus or minus, plus or minus square root of x plus 1. Okay, so well, what difference does the positive or the negative square root make? Well, if I had y equals the positive square root of x plus 1, this is just the top half of the parabola. Because when I square root something, the output is going to be non-negative. And putting a positive sign in front of that keeps that output non-negative. So this is what y equals. That means my y values are non-negative. That must be this top half of the parabola. So whereas if I were to do y equals negative square root, that would give me the equation of the bottom half of the parabola. So from here, we can, let me put this in a different color, we can set up our integral. Actually, we'll need two integrals. I'll, I'll write integrals from here. So I'm going to leave that for you as an exercise. It should be pretty easy to finish from here. It's essentially just one more line. So I'd encourage you to try it. But if you have questions after trying it, definitely come ask about it in office hours and in tutoring.